Hello everyone, welcome to our video on Advanced Mathematics of Class 9 and we are going to start Chapter 7 that is Plane Geometry. So in this chapter, we have various theorems and today we are going to solve two of those theorems. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So in Chapter 7, you will see there are four theorems. So we are going to solve Theorem 1 and Theorem 2 today. So starting off with the first theorem, what does the first theorem say? According to Theorem 1, it says that the perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of a triangle are concurrent. Concurrent means they meet at the same point. So let me show you via a diagram that if we have a triangle and we draw the perpendicular bisectors of all the three sides. That means bisect first means first it should be a bisector. That means it should be the midpoint. Midpoint of all the three lines and then you should have a perpendicular there. So if I draw a perpendicular here, a perpendicular here and a perpendicular here, they must lie on the same point. So all the three perpendicular bisectors of the three sides of a triangle, this will be perpendicular, perpendicular and perpendicular. Plus these two parts, these two parts and these two parts, they must be equal, they must be equal and uh, they must be equal. So these two must be equal, these two must be equal and these two must be equal. All these angles should be 90 degree. So they must meet at a common point. So that means they are concurrent. That is the first theorem. So we will uh, try to solve or try to prove this theorem right now. So what I will do, I will draw the similar diagram here. So we have a triangle. I will give the name of a triangle as A, B, C. So let us take the midpoints. So what we are going to do now, we are going to take the midpoints of all the three sides. AB is midpoint, AC is midpoint and BC is midpoint. Okay. Then we are going to draw the perpendiculars of this side and this side. So suppose this is our D, E and F. Okay. So these are the midpoints. Now we will draw the perpendicular bisectors on D and F. Only D and F. So let us draw a perpendicular bisector here. Suppose this is, you take, you measure it with your scale and then draw. I am drawing it freehand. And then you draw one from here. Okay. And what you do is you join O, E. Suppose this is the point O, what you do is you join O and E, okay. So what we know from this diagram is that OD is the perpendicular bisector of A, OF is the perpendicular bisector of AC, okay, perpendicular bisector, perpendicular bisector and E is only the midpoint of BC, what we have done is we have joined O and E. So if we can prove if we can prove that this angle is also 90 degree, that means this is also going to be the perpendicular bisector and they will be meeting at the same point. So our theorem 1 will be proven. So that's how we can do it. So for doing this, what we need to do, do we need to draw a construction. What is the construction? Join O with all the three vertices. Means join OB, join OC and then join OA. Okay, this is our construction. Dotted lines are the construction. So let me write what is given for theorem 1. This is our theorem 1. Okay. So given is we have ABC is a triangle. ABC is a triangle. OD and OF are the perpendicular bisectors of AB and AC respectively. Okay. Perpendicular bisectors. E is the midpoint of BC and we have joined OE. So what we have to prove if this is the case then what we have to prove ultimately is that OE is perpendicular to BC. To prove is that OE is perpendicular to BC because if we can prove this part then we can tell that the whole theorem is true. Okay. So what is the construction that we have done? Construction is OA, OB and OC are joined. OA, OB and OC are drawn or are joined whichever one you want to write. Now we will start with the proof. So, look at this. 
since OD is the perpendicular bisector of AB, that means OA and OB should be equal. Now, if you are not aware of this, why it should be equal, let me give you a brief idea. Suppose I take a triangle and I draw the perpendicular bisector. Okay, suppose this is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, in that case, what will happen if I take these two triangles, what I will have, suppose it is A, B, C and D. Okay, what I will get from here is if I take these two triangles, A, B, D and A, D, C, what I will get is that angle A, D, B, angle A, D, B is equal to angle A, D, C because both are 90 degree. Then we will have B, D equal to C, D, right, because both are this, I, I have said D is the perpendicular bisector that means BD and CD will be equal in addition to that AD is the common side AD equal to AD so what happens here by side angle and side by SAS postulate these two triangles are congruent and if these two triangles are congruent that means similarly in this triangle if you see this triangle is similar to this triangle so if these two triangles are congruent this side and this side will be equal right the two sides will be equal similarly in this triangle here we have the perpendicular bisector this is our line so hence OA and OB must be equal because these two triangles will be congruent since these two will be congruent OA and OB will be equal so that is the concept that we will use here to prove this so what we will write is since OD is the perpendicular bisector of AB therefore OA will be equal to OB this is number one okay this part done now we will move to this part of OF so since OF is the perpendicular bisector of AC therefore OA is equal to OC right since OF is the perpendicular bisector OA and OC will be equal so we have this one is number two from one and two what do we get OA OB OA OC so OB and OC must also be equal so from one and two OB will be equal to OC that means what as OB and OC are equal that means OE must be the perpendicular bisector it must be perpendicular because as we have taken here since it was perpendicular bisector these two were equal here since these two are equal this has to be the perpendicular bisector so therefore we must have OE perpendicular to BC so that means so this is what we have proved so our part of proving is done so what does this mean therefore OE OF and OD are the perpendicular bisectors of BC, AC and AB respectively and they are concurrent. That means they meet at the same point. Hence, we have proved our theorem. Okay, so I hope you understood this one. This is the proof of the first theorem. So now we will move on to the theorem 2. So now we will talk about theorem 2. And theorem 2 states that the angular bisectors of all the angles in a triangle are concurrent. In theorem 1, it was the perpendicular bisector of all the sides. Now we are talking about the angular bisector of all the angles. That means if this is a triangle, I draw the angular bisector of this angle. If I draw the angular bisector of this angle, I draw the angular bisector of this angle and I draw the angular bisector of this angle, they must meet at the same point. Okay, so this is our proof that we have to do. These are the angular bisectors, means these angles will be equal, these angles will be equal and these angles will also be equal. Okay, so let's start the proof. We will draw a triangle. Suppose A, B, C. And we will draw, what we will do now is we will draw the perpendicular uh, angular bisectors of any two angles. Suppose I draw the angular bisector of angle B and the angular bisector of angle C. 
okay so these are the angular bisectors of angle b and c such that since these are the angular bisectors these two angles will be equal and these two angles will be equal right what we will do now we will join this point with a we will join this point only join it okay so then so what do we have to prove now since these are the angular bisectors and they are meeting at this point if we can prove that these two angles are equal that then we can say this is also the angular bisector and that means all the three angular bisectors meet at the same point so just like the previous one where two of the lines we have considered as what we want as lifetime as perpendicular bisectors this time as angular bisectors so this two we will consider as our requirement but this one we will leave for proving so since these two meet at this point we have to prove that this line is the angular bisector of angle a so now let us give this line one name we will give the line one name but before that what we will do from this point we will draw perpendiculars only perpendiculars so from this point we will draw one perpendicular to this line one perpendicular to this line and one perpendicular to this line okay let's give the naming suppose this is i this is d e and f so i e i f and i d are all perpendiculars on the three sides so this is our theorem 2 so what is given what we will take or given or you can write let so abc is a triangle ib and ic are the angular bisectors of bisectors of angle b and angle c respectively okay ib and ic are the angular bisectors of b and c respectively done so ai is what we have drawn this one we will not write here so to prove ia is the angular bisector of angle a if you can prove this then you can prove the theorem so what is the construction that we have done construction is oe perpendicular to ie i mean ie perpendicular to bc if perpendicular to ac and id perpendicular to ab are drawn okay drawn or yeah, these are drawn so now we have the proof okay so how to do the proof see in a suppose we have an angle angle here and we draw the angular bisector okay this is our angle and this is the angular bisector suppose this point any point we choose on the angular bisector this point will be equidistant from both these arms so if i draw a perpendicular here and i draw a perpendicular here these two lengths will be same okay again if you want the proof of this we can do it easily suppose we again again i draw the same thing this is the angular bisector suppose i give a name i take a point a here i draw a perpendicular another perpendicular suppose this is o this is p this is q so if we take these two triangles what can we get we can get angle p equal to angle q because they are both 90 degree then we can get oa as the common side so oa equal to oa right and what we have is uh, we can also write uh, since this is the angular bisector so this two angles will be same so we can write angle q o a equal to an uh, i mean equal to angle p o a so these two angles are equal these two angles are equal this is the common side so by angle a s a postulate these two triangles will be congruent if these two triangles are congruent this line and this line will be equal so that means any point on the angular bisector is always equidistant from the other two arms that is a theorem or that is a law so how to use this one so you see since we know that ib is the angular bisector of angle b that means ie and id must be equal the point i will be equidistant from the two arms these are the two arms ib is the angular bisector then ie and id must be equidistant from these two arms right according to this theorem so since ib bisects angle b therefore id must be equal to i this is number 1 i hope you understood why i said this also since ic bisects angle c therefore 
IE must be equal to IF number 2 C since IC is bisecting angle C so IE and IF must be equal because they are the two points equidistant from the two arms these are the two arms this is the angular bisector so this point and this point must be equal so this and this are equal they are equidistant so from 1 and 2 what do we get ID equal to IE and IE equal to IF these two are same that means ID must be equal to IF so from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 what do we have IE equal to IF now if you look here I mean not IE equal to IF ID equal to IF ID equal to IF that means what this one and this one ID and IF are equal that means what that means AI is the bisector of this angle since ID and IE are equal that means these two parts A B and C these are the two arms this is the angular bisector and these two points are now equal these two distances are equal that means this must be the angular bisector so since we have ID equal to IF therefore AI bisects angle A that is or that means what that that is or we can write it like this that is the three angular bisectors meet at a common point that is the angular bisectors of angle A, angle B and angle C meet at the same point I which means they are concurrent hence we have proved our theorem that all the angular bisectors meet at the same point so that is how we prove the second theorem very easy stuff both the proofs are really easy one thing i forgot to mention in the previous one the point where the perpendicular bisectors meet this point it is called the circum center circum center and in this case the point where all the angular bisectors meet this is called the in center so this will be our in center and this will be our circum center okay so that is about both the theorems i hope you understood this video if you have any query ask me in the app or you can ask me in whatsapp so i'll be there to help you out so thank you everyone for watching and until next time cheers